was a good session. They rebooked. Yeah. Um, they want, they're doing bi-weekly. They want weekly. So I'm just going to move stuff around to get them in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was interesting. It was really, they were both together in the same room. And I, I texted them early on just to find where, out. Were they, were they not before in your previous sessions? No, they like, were, they were separate. So that's why uh, I was, it was more logistics it. around like doxy and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, so they were together, which was really nice. And mm -hmm. we went over, um, kind of, I watched the video of what, like the recording of what you sent me. So it gave me kind of an idea of how to go about it. Mm -hmm. um, we went over their goals and they had mm -hmm. like, they had a commonality of trust is a big one and then communication. And then we kind of talked about, they actually brought up their most recent fight, which was right before session. And let me just tease out one thing. So trust, you said commonality, both of them don't trust the other person. Yeah. Okay. So that was, that was their goal is to like gain trust in one another and then also learn to communicate. Mm. This is the, the gay couple. Yes. Yes. So, yeah. Um, the one with, yeah, there is. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. You only have one couple, right? Yeah, just the one. Yeah, okay. So they we went kind of did that whole like video camera in the room. And that was, they really, really enjoyed that because it was a different way of looking at the situation. Mm -hmm. um, it was interesting to kind of like, I had to like keep my vision open if like one was telling their version of like, like the video camera story and like kind of mm -hmm. seeing the other one's mm -hmm. reaction. Mm -hmm. So there was a bit of eye rolling um, mm -hmm. or like, shocked like with what they said mm -hmm. um but it kind of came down to both of them had the same thing come up after the fight and it's resentment so past things are coming up so it was an argument over um client b was supposed to come over at 2 30 and didn't mm -hmm. come and came over at 2 35 and then had to wait because client b was in the shower which then turned into 2 45 and that was the fight was about like mm. kind mm -hmm. of communication about time and then mm -hmm. it came back to resenting one another mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. so what did you do with uh with resentment it kind of came up toward like i'm i tried to i asked them if they'd be open to doing a little bit longer because it was 50 minutes goes by so fast like mm -hmm. so fast i can't get mm -hmm. over it it's so funny because some clients it goes so long and then with a couple it's like mm -hmm. I blinked and it was done. Um, mm -hmm. So they're going to look at their, they're open to it. They're just going to try to figure out their schedules are so busy is what mm -hmm. it sounds like. Mm -hmm. um, but and then, up. so, so back to, to sort of resentment. Yeah. So how does resentment come up as far as like, is that like what they're wanting to work on? Or when you say resentment, this is just what's coming up after their fight. This is what's coming up like during and after their fight. And they both mentioned it yeah. when they were telling their and, and what does is, what is resentment look like for them? So for client B, um, it's resenting client A for basically how they talk, how he talks to him. Mm -hmm. um, kind of the, okay, I should have been on time, but you know, you could have given me communication. Mm -hmm. So resenting. Were, were, you, were you able to get underneath at all? Like what is resentment like for you? Or is it more about, I resent this about what you do. It was a little bit of both. I would say it kind of got under just just a touch around. It felt like for client B, it said the whole day it's like pushing them away, um, like feeling themselves close, like get angry and then just close, shut down completely. Mm -hmm. um, so the the fight will be over. Client A will try to you know just even just physical touch or to go about the day. And client B is like shut down completely. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then for client for client A, it's the resentment of the infidelity. Mm -hmm. And uh, B is the withdrawer. Um, sorry, I'm getting them. I'm trying. I see them. On, I kind of like have put them. Okay, so the one that shuts okay? down. Yeah. Is it okay to use names, Ophir? Because it's uh, like, if I ever upload it, maybe not. So just, okay. yeah, just give them letters or okay, give them so fake names. Yeah. I'll give them, I'll give them letters. That'll help me a little bit. Okay. Sure. Uh, 
So which one's which one's B, the one that uh, resents and, and, and shuts down for the rest of the day? That is the one who engaged in cheating. Okay. And Got client it. A is the one who did the video mm -hmm. stuff. Um, so client A resents them for, for cheating. Mm -hmm. And that comes up in every every fight mm -hmm. because it's questioning, okay, what was taking so long? Mm -hmm. What were you doing? Things like that. Um, and client B is the pursuer. Client A is the withdrawer. Okay. Which was... Um, and how do you know that? I, what tells I you that? I think I know. I am like, I can't be 100%, I guess. Um, so with client B being the pursuer, he was like, 100% want to work on this. And then that was like first session. Second session together was really like, um, like kind of the one talking the most and like wanting to fix things. And yeah. So out. so you equate the motivation and wanting to work on it as as uh, the the pursuing. I would. I don't know if it's like motivation, but more so like like you doing this or like really yeah. getting. I don't know what the word is when they're have like talking about the fight and like okay and that's where, that's b the one that, that did the cheating yes yeah. okay and yeah. then a kind of withdraws and it's like i can watch him kind of just hold back almost like when when mm -hmm. we're even talking mm -hmm. okay. um, which was really interesting to see mm -hmm. and like then with the eye rolls of client a i would like at like bring it up and like we kind of talk about that and it was hard for him to talk about, like to kind of get into it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think I think client A is the withdrawer. Yeah. It doesn't matter at this point, but uh, yeah. So where would you like? Uh, I think I've got a pretty good idea. Where where kind of do you feel stuck or want want support? Around? I'm a little stuck with how to go about it next. Like right now, I'm kind of just getting an idea of like what. Like what it looks like, kind of like the video mm. camera per se. Mm -hmm. um, the yeah, the figure eight, right? The loop. Yeah. Yeah. So we just kind of got into that one argument because it was right before mm -hmm. right before session. So I'm curious if like mm -hmm. that's something that we would get into in the like next session. Just mm -hmm. another example of that. Mm -hmm. um, How far did you? do you feel you got with like being able to go underneath the cycle kind of were you able to do enactments or were you able to deepen either person's experience I would say like a little bit I think I wasn't able to do enactments and I talked a bit about it like beforehand kind of like the gist of EFT which they mm -hmm. like, really enjoyed like they were like, wow <laughs> really liked it um which was nice to hear I would say not necessarily enough in that session, um, but they both kind of said the same thing, that it was nice to listen to each other's ver like video camera version without kind mm -hmm. of going mm -hmm. at one another. Like they were able to step mm -hmm. back and actually listen fully. Nice. Even it was hard for them to hear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. That's very good. And uh, how far did you get as far as getting underneath it? Like, what do you remember uh, as far as their internal experience of what the other person does? Like, like the word resentment is an example. Like, what is the internal experience of that? You mm -hmm. got to be shutting down afterwards, but that's more about what happened after the fight. What about in the session? What what were you able to get them to feel in the session? Anything at all that you noticed? I would say with client B, there was a lot of like discomfort. Or sorry, client client A, sorry. Did I say client B or client A? Sorry, I'm getting confused here. So client A, the one that was cheated on, there's discomfort. Discomfort in what sense? Hearing client b really get like so client b when telling the story gets really into it mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. tone goes up yeah hands like kind of yeah. that movement where client a mm -hmm. tends to be really reserved when telling the story mm -hmm. um i don't know how to explain this so client b like when telling the story will say you know like he did this and he this, mm -hmm. this, this. Mm -hmm. and when client a is telling it he's like you know well maybe i like maybe right. my was different right. like and kind of question right. 
things. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so it's pretty clear to you that the B is the pursuer and, and A is the withdrawer. Yeah. 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 I would say I need to get more under the hood mm -hmm. next session. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'll have more time now that we didn't, like, now we, we're not going to, like, go so much into, like, EFT and all that stuff. So hopefully yeah. I'll have more time. Yeah. For, for me anyways, um, mm -hmm. I was super nervous, I think, just going. Yeah, through. you can book the longer sessions as well, if, if that helps, yeah. Okay. If you have time for it. Yeah, yeah it would, I think it definitely was neat, because I felt like we were just getting into it, and then it like, mm -hmm. like oh, mm -hmm. 40. Yeah, you can see why when uh, people are now doing the, the MDMA therapy, it's like six to eight hour sessions. Yeah. Yeah. That's. That'd be so long. I like can't imagine, but I could at the same time. Once once you do a two hour session, you're like, and that goes by really fast. Yeah, it's just kind yeah. of next step. Is that not in Canada though, Ophir? Like not yet, or is it just like? Uh, just clinical trials right now for for both psilocybin and MDMA. Okay. Yeah, for different purposes. Yeah. MD was... MDMA is more for um, PTSD, but uh, in the '60s they did a lot of research with MDMA for um, for couples therapy uh but but they're they're still going on uh not in canada i think in the states yeah MDMA, but yeah okay i know i heard about that i something about washington i read about and that's yeah. how I, did it come to canada yeah. like um no not yet there's people yeah. doing it but but not uh not legally yeah yeah so i would i would say this this week coming like definitely getting under the hood more is what i need to do mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. And I guess I'm just curious how to go, like, how can I go about that more? Like, how do I hone in on that more, I guess? Is yeah. What are, when you think back to that session, what are some key um, experiences that you noticed, whether it's kind of the tone and the nonverbals or even some of the words that you noticed? Like, I bet you, you have a pretty good grasp of what, if I had to force you to talk about what's his experience, what's his experience and uh, you could be able to articulate it and you'd probably be pretty close. Um, I'm just trying to think back. Okay, so just like even verbals or nonverbals, like with client B, they talked about being like resentful and pulling away before session, like after the fight for a couple hours after and then during session they're really like touchy huggy with their, mm -hmm. their partner yeah so even even right there you can go you know you talk about about being more pulled away and so you can go there you can go right now you're being more touchy you can go there right both of those are stances they're both like the coping around the the underlying primary experience and your jobs to help in, in accessing the primary right yeah and, so and yeah so one example is simply like um to point out oh, so this is what what you do right you know when you do that you know what's coming up for you you can you can go that way um you can tie it into a's behavior right if you're talking about a particular instance you know, we're talking about triggers, right? So before you did that, what do you remember A doing? Before you did that, right? You link it back to A's behavior. Okay, so A, give me an example from what you remember. What did A do right before um, B pulled away, you know, in that experience that they were talking about? What did, what's so the a, connection? A tried to find like a balance between that, so kind of to like, mend the argument per se being like okay yeah i was you know i should have like texted to say like i was on my way um and you know maybe, and that was that was a trigger for b yeah because yeah. a like, you know maybe you could have let me know like kind of just it sounds like a kind of tries to find this happy medium of like yeah like i could have done this you could have done that that would so ap appease appease the, the situation right yeah so then you go into so when a does that what's the message you get What's the message, you know, and you look at B, how do you interpret that? What is he trying to do? What is his intention? I kind of brought that up actually. And client B was like, I kind of asked like what that does for client B because 
he was really triggered by it and he said it, yeah. it just makes me think that like nothing like he's right i'm wrong and basically telling me what to do like a dad right. saying, like, like right. a father. so you hear it as he's telling you what to do when you are told what to do in that way what do you what do you think to yourself I kind of did this so, without actually saying yeah, this. Yeah. So, what do you what do you remember, or what do you think you would say to that? What do you think to yourself? You'd say like, "You're not my dad." That's like what you think. Like, yeah. Not. You you kind of jump to like defending yourself. You see it as this attack, top down authority, and you you kind of say hey, no. You kind of want to push back, right? Mm -hmm. That's what you want to do. That's what you show uh, a you yeah. and you do. You push back, right? right? Or maybe not, maybe you pull away and shut down, right? So whatever the thing is that you do. But right before that, right before you kind of jump to defend yourself, right? What's it like to, to see your partner and to have him like in this way, as you described, like tower over you, my way or the highway, right? And you see, I'm like softening my voice. And I'm like, just yeah. trying to join, join him in that and give him the, give him permission to to soften like what is that actually like for you before you jump to that right like to see your partner as this like authority and like what do you tell yourself like what do you think to yourself in response to that and he might say um i hate it i don't like it oh it's not it's not a fun experience right mm -hmm. you just keep and you just keep going with it you just kind of we call it like revving it up right you keep just revving it up until you start to see some softness, right? And you follow the softness, right? Okay. Did you get to see any of that softness from B at all? Um. It's harder to see the softness from a pursuer. Yeah. Because they're, would... they're, they're pursuing, right? And that's our job is to help soften it. Yeah, I would say they, they would probably get, they probably got more revved up per se like they're 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 mm -hmm. really um yeah with their hands and like yeah and like that's it. where and you can go back to like oh and it makes you want to do that right it makes you want to be all big and strong and you know puff up your chest um but underneath that in response to you thinking he's telling you what to do it has to be his way you know y y there's different there's different ways of getting there right so one way is to go you know that must that must be pretty scary just to throw something out there or you know that must be just really hard to deal with just like a, like a more abstract ambiguous emotional word right okay. must be really hard to deal with like it must be pretty uncomfortable right these kinds of words and then they go yeah okay, pay attention to that where can you feel that in your body you know he's telling you this is the only way this is you know my way and and you're you're one one a part of you wants to fight back and a part of you just doesn't like it what's what's that like this part of you that doesn't like it you're just kind of expanding on it right and if it's too hard for them to access it you can go you know what yeah it's really it's really hard to stay with it it's really not comfortable right yeah, yeah. could you let can you let a know that can you let him know how uncomfortable it is to stay in the space and that's it and that's your enactment how often do you do enactments over like in a in a session per se like i kind of that was kind of my question like, in, in a in a 50 minute session at least one at okay. least yeah in uh in an extended session at least one each and when when i say enactment i'm not referring to uh, uh when the receiver of the enactment of the expression of the enactment enact back what it's like for them i don't count that as the enactment that's still the first enactment so okay. it's like what one each like one uh usually in 80 minutes you have enough time to do or i at least have enough time uh to do but if you could at least do one even in an 80 minute or one in a 50 minute that's that's good okay yeah but always aim for at least one every session even in my 30 minute session when i'm doing the 30 30 30 i still go for one okay yeah, unless it's like a very, very sensitive, like traumatized, one of them is traumatized because you don't want to rush it um, if you don't think that the, the either the side can share it vulnerably or the other side can't receive it vulnerably. Okay. Yeah.
but you still want to give them some kind of an experience. So even if you just enact a coping, that's still helpful. Like when, so for B, for example, when you told me, when you said that thing to me, I took that to mean that you want to tell me kind of how to do things. It's like, it's your way. And all I want to do is fight, fight back. That's a, that's a good enactment for a first session. Okay. It's just a uh, instead of getting angry, it's saying that I'm getting angry. So okay. it's like a, a step towards uh, a more primary feeling. And, and it's refreshing for the other side to hear this like ownership. Yeah. Of their secondary response, like of the anger. It's, it's really uh, like can be really refreshing if they've never taken kind of uh, accountability of that before. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, looking back, I feel like I could have done an enactment like certain yeah. times. You can always do an enactment. Yeah. So the, the idea of an enactment is when you hit a floor, an emotional floor of any kind, when you're working with one person, the natural transition to move to the other person is an enactment. Because what you're doing is you hit your emotional floor, you enact that emotional floor, or at least you enact that it's hard to enact that. You know what I mean? Like if it's too hard, enact how hard it is, enact how scary this is to do this. And then that's an enactment still, because if you can't do it, that's fear coming up. And if you don't want to label it fear, just label it anticipation, label it expectation. I expect that you will give me a bad response, right? I anticipate it. I think you will do this. If you don't want to own the fear, that's okay. And would you have them both turn towards each other? Like, yeah. Yeah. And it's only an enactment if they're both looking at each other. Okay. Do you, and, and, and there's, there's, there's smaller enactments too. There's you enacting for them. Okay. Right. There's, you know, what's it like to hear that, even though they haven't looked at each other, but, but like you're moving to it's, it's not all or nothing. So you're moving towards being able to look each other in the eye. But if it's too much, it's too much. You just, we call it thin slicing. You, you thin slice a baby step for them. Okay. Do you, yeah. have you had, I'm sure you've had it over here, like where um, the withdrawer tends to like, if in an enactment, like not want to look or the other way? Everything, sure, sure. Um, what tends to draw the withdrawer in is when the pursuer softens. Okay. Because they don't, they don't tend to see that, right? They don't have to see a pursuer dropping down and being vulnerable or owning their behavior. So yeah. it, it, it brings them forward. And if you get to the place with the pursuer that they're already dropping down before they even enact, right? The, the withdrawer is not, is like experiencing all this. They're, they're, that's, that's shoring them up as well. Yeah, it's building in safety for the withdrawer to be able to listen, to, to hear what's happening for the other person. Yeah, that make, yeah, that makes sense. Thank you for that. 